If you watch my unboxing of the Gigabyte Aero 16, you'll know that I think it really showed up in a lot of ways. We have this new aluminum design. We have no more two-piece top cover to side panels. It's one nice solid piece of aluminum. And they just made a few upgrades that really make this laptop stand out to me. Where in the past, I love the performance, I love the color gamut range, but it just wasn't the build quality I loved. Those things have been solved. And if you're curious about my full thoughts on this redesign, I'll link up my unboxing video at the end of this video. But this video is here to cover the performance and a lot of things that we couldn't get to during the unboxing. Let's get into it. First of all, the color gamut range on this laptop is as expected, 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 100% DCI-P3. So great color accurate screen, also very bright at almost 500 nits of screen brightness with a Delta E of 1.49. So this thing has what it takes for a bright and color accurate screen for creators. Now the next thing to point out is the webcam. And I love the way they've assembled this webcam here. Rather than making a thicker bezel around the screen, they went ahead and bumped up this notch on the laptop. This not only gives us a really clean view of the screen with a thin bezel, but it also allows you to easily open and close the laptop with one hand as this little notch here is super easy to grab and open up your laptop. And also if you're curious about how the speakers sound, here's a quick audio sample of the speakers. Regarding the keyboard, the keys are a slightly smaller key with nice spacing between them. They are not difficult to type on, but if you do have a lot larger fingers, you might find them to be small. My fingertips really aren't that big, so it doesn't really cause an issue for me, but if you do have large fingers, you will notice that these keys are slightly smaller than other laptops on the market. Now, I like how we do have these full size arrow keys. However, we do have a three fourth size shift key, which I'm not in love with. I personally wish they would have made these the half arrow keys and just had the toggle switches here because honestly, I don't use the arrow keys that much, but I'm constantly using the right shift key. So maybe you know you could train yourself to use the left shift key, but that's just not my natural inclination when typing. But overall, the keys have a great key press, a nice snap back, and they will do the trick. I really like the black trackpad. It's quiet, it's secured well to the chassis, it's a good size, it's not massive, but it is a big trackpad. And here's a quick audio sample of me using the keyboard and trackpad so you can hear what it sounds like. The hinge on the screen is very well done. I like how they've added this third hinge here in the middle in order to support the screen as it opens and closes. You have no screen flex here on the screen because it's completely tethered to the chassis, secured very well. And regarding screen flex, very, very little screen flex at all. A nice hard, firm aluminum top cover that gives your screen great rigidity. Yes, it's a word. On this channel, it's a word. Now quickly regarding the ports, on the left side panel we have USB type C and our headphone jack. And then on the right side panel we have our power adapter and two USB type C's. Now if you saw the unboxing, you know that they include a dongle for your other ports, but that dongle does not include an SD card slot. I thought that was kind of an oversight, um, but you do get a dongle that's included in the box of this laptop. Now quickly let's go ahead and flip this over, check out the assembly, and it's assembled very nicely to the side panel. There's a slight catchy edge here at the front where the bottom cover fits into the side panel of the chassis, but it's nothing sharp. You're not going to like cut your hand on it or anything, but it is a little catchy there. Nice large vent along the bottom cover of the chassis as well. This laptop does very good cooling and we'll get into that in just a few minutes. It is slightly heavier than I expected, but it is still a nice package. You can see the weight and thickness coming up on the screen, uh, but with the performance that this laptop packs, I wasn't necessarily disappointed by the weight. Um, just on a perspective, I know people say, oh, what's wrong with a heavy laptop? Nothing necessarily, it's just summer light, summer heavy. So I'm saying this one's one of the little bit heavier ones. Now the model that I'm reviewing comes with the i7-12700H, the RTX 3070 Ti, 16 gigs of RAM, and one terabyte of SSD. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the Gigabyte Aero 16, then you can head down 
in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase from that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, before we get into the performance section, let's go ahead and talk about the battery life. This does have a 99 watt hour battery, which I anticipated would give us great battery results. However, it really didn't show off as I hoped it would. The software inside of this laptop just doesn't really work well with the i7 processor as I had hoped. We're getting about six hours and 45 minutes during productivity tasks using the Passmark benchmark. Streaming video on YouTube was about five hours and 53 minutes. Running the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark on repeat was four hours and 27 minutes. And then running a 4K Premiere Pro project on loop during playback was two hours and 36 minutes. So one area I think Gigabyte could really work on is just optimizing their creator center better with that i7 processor to give us better efficiency with this laptop. But let's jump into the performance section because to me, build quality and performance is where this laptop really stands out. Now, first and foremost, looking at the simulated benchmarks, you can see in Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench single core and multi-core, this laptop is at the top of the charts. And so that really makes me happy knowing that if you're gonna flex to your little neighbor friend, you're gonna be in the winning team. Let's go. Yeah, that was, that was a joke. All right, but as we move on to some real world benchmarks, you can see an Autodesk 3ds Max and Autodesk Maya, it's at the top of the chart. You're gonna have no issues in regards to this laptop in those programs. Now, once we get into PTC Creo and SolidWorks, it falls down the charts a little bit in PTC Creo, and then it falls down quite a bit more in SolidWorks. So if you're a SolidWorks user, this isn't exactly the laptop I would recommend. If you're really considering SolidWorks, I would go for a workstation laptop. So something with like the A5000 GPU, which is built for programs like SolidWorks. These GPUs are great inside of these laptops, these gaming GPUs, but the workstation GPUs are built for specific programs, and that's what gives them the overall better advantage over a gaming GPU. Now, as we move into After Effects, this laptop really stood out with an 836 in After Effects. That's a fantastic score. You're not gonna have any issues inside of After Effects. Now, as we move on to video editing, this is where I was most impressed with this laptop. Not only did we have good export times, but we also had low fan noise and we had great thermals. So the highest fan noise was at 60 decibels, but that wasn't even giving us the fastest export time. So I really don't even think you need to use the laptop on turbo mode. It did give you 58 degrees Celsius during the export, which is absolutely fantastic. But really, I would use this laptop on, say, power mode. You get a 72 degrees Celsius thermal, and you would get a 48 decibel on the fan noise during the export, and you're still going to get the 2 minutes and 57 seconds. So for me, this laptop is great at either eco mode or at power mode. Both showed off very well. Now for 6K footage, you can export B-RAW or RED footage at around the 20 minute mark, which is pretty average um, for laptops in this performance category. Regarding playback for 4K on this laptop, you're gonna have no problems, zero drop frames. When you get into 6K B-RAW, you're gonna have about 500 drop frames, and then for red footage, about 3,000 drop frames. And that's actually really good. Last year, a lot of the laptops were hitting nine to 10 to 11,000 drop frames. So these new i7 processors and the RTX 3070 Ti combo makes for great playback with 6K footage. One area I've been impressed with with these latest 12th gen Intel processors is DaVinci Resolve. We're finally seeing better export times out of DaVinci Resolve. You can see the results coming up on the screen. Playback is going to be good. For some reason, DaVinci is just so much more optimized for playback than Premiere Pro. I always seem to have nice, smooth playback. If I have four gigs of VRAM or higher in my GPU and I have a nice H series processor, I always have smooth playback in DaVinci Resolve. Premiere Pro's kinda gotta step up their game in that that respect, that's all I have to say. But again, good export times, definitely better than the 11th gen uh, Intel CPUs we're doing. For the Photoshop benchmark, we have a 941, which is well above my kind of 800 point, like, wow, your laptop's killing it. And so you're not gonna have any issues in Photoshop with this laptop. 
Overall, this laptop has what it takes for creators. Great performance for designers, artists, and photographers relating to Photoshop. Fantastic performance for video editors and 3D modeling. Even architecture, you know, looking into SolidWorks, it'll do the job, but it's just not the top of the charts. Still a great performer. It matched with the color accurate screen and fantastically improved build quality. You can't beat it. However, to be totally honest, the one area that really causes me a little bit of wantonness is the battery life. I wish we had better battery life for those on-the-go productivity moments where you know you need to be out in a meeting or at a coffee shop or maybe you're in class and you need a long battery life for your work day. Otherwise, I really think this thing has what it takes. Just make sure you bring that charger along with you. Links are ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if we don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.